Engineering theme park rides is a challenging business. You have to delve deep inside the human mind to grab riders physically and psychologically. Manipulating fear and pleasure to deliver even bigger experiences. Absolutely beautiful. It's all part of creating the next generation of thrill rides. Oh, God. It's a cutthroat business with billions of dollars at stake. If you're going to succeed in the thrill ride industry, you need to push the envelope. You're going to have the very best technology and attempt the impossible to stay ahead of the game. It's a challenge that designers and engineers totally thrive on. This is Fahrenheit, a coaster taking human fear in a completely new direction. It's a terrifying ride with corkscrew rolls, a cobra, and an inverted S-roll. But thrill seekers are coming to Hershey Park, Pennsylvania to try out a completely unique experience. They want to take a drop that messes up your mind. We want each ride to have a signature. And it has to be unique to Hershey. And it ended up that we have a 97 degree drop for the ride. What did he say? So we have a 97 degree drop for the ride. Sounds impossible, but when this track drops, it goes backwards, seven degrees further than a straight vertical drop. It's total psychological terror. You feel like you're falling out of the train as your brain goes into complete fear overload. The drop is one thing, but it's the slow 90 degree climb eyes looking straight into the sky that creates a huge sense of anticipation. You feel your heartbeat in your throat. So you have that psychological impact in your eyes and your body saying, no, 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 this is happening. So you, you're playing with all these pieces. Kent Backman has been designing coasters for over 13 years. This is like the greatest laboratory in the world for an engineer to play with physics, all the sciences, all the disciplines. And this is the closest I'm going to get to NASA. After the drop from hell, Fahrenheit delivers all kinds of cool twists and turns. Each component is unique. The large 107 degree loop and this cobra element and the twist and turn in high speed banks. Throughout the elements of the ride, we're changing the energy levels and we're manipulating gravity and we're playing with gravity. Designers were challenged to create a compact coaster with new innovations. When we first decided to add a roller coaster in 2008, we had to first determine where we wanted to put it. And this space, as you can see, was, had a number of you know, construction elements already around it. Fahrenheit was built in just four months. It's 2,700 feet of pure tubular steel track. And it's this piece of the jigsaw that's most crucial to Fahrenheit's success. Perfecting a 97 degree drop was a tough task, but why not 98 or 100? It was down to the train's articulation. In coaster terms, that's the space between cars, allowing them to move freely without getting jammed. We could take it up to 97 because the trains have articulation of about 38.4 degrees and about 10 and 10 and a quarter this direction. So you have a lot of movement between the front seat and the back seat. If we would have gone further, then we'd have to redesign all the trains. There are only three trains, each carrying a maximum of 12 riders. Their length is also dictated by the compact design of the track. People say, why is the train so short? The train is short because, remember, I said there's a lot of articulation, a lot of rotation between the track. This is more of a road handling course. There's very tight turns very tight twisting, where we couldn't use a normal train to do that. Trains were one of the design elements. They also needed this drop to be as dramatic as possible, and that came down to some simple physics. When we set the top height, that gives us all the energy we need. And we're coming out of that first drop as a tremendous fall. We developed close to four plus Gs coming off. So that train at six tons, now times four, is 24 tons of all energy, of total pure energy. And that's what rock and rolls allows us to go around this whole track. 
physics is all fine and good on paper. But to test the world's first 97-degree drop, the job was left to a bunch of dummies. Dummies used to be filled with sand. Now engineers use water. The sloshing around of liquid is more representative of how the human body behaves. It also gives a better understanding of the G-forces, making you feel heavier and lighter during the ride. So as you drop, coming off of this drop, the first drop, you're about four Gs. So if you're 100 pounds, you're gonna experience somebody who's like 400 pounds. And then we come out of that G, and we take you right up to maybe a half a G. So now you're 50 pounds, and you're like floating on air. So we, we're playing with that, we're manipulating with all the G-forces. 4Gs is roughly what astronauts experience on a space shuttle launch. It's important riders only experience this for a few milliseconds. Otherwise, they would black out. Safety checks are rigorous. When you're going this fast, any malfunctions would have devastating effects. When this ride kickstarts, it's non-stop for 12 hours. In just one week, the train travels over 1,500 miles. Proper maintenance can mean the difference between life and death. Within minutes of opening time, Fahrenheit is ready for action and adrenaline junkies get in line. Among them is Brendan Walker, a self-confessed thrill seeker, but one with a purpose. His aim is to decode what happens to our bodies in thrilling situations and use the data to help designers take their creations to the very next level. Today, Brendan and technician Stefan are conducting an experiment at Hershey Park. Their subject, Fahrenheit. They will test how each drop, twist, and turn affects Brendan's body. Yeah. The data will offer designers an insight into the different thrills this coaster delivers and ways they can tweak and improve rides in the future. Changes in Brendan's heart rate will highlight arousal, measured by an electrocardiogram. This lead here is connected to my side here, and one up here, so that's measuring activity across my heart. Signs of pleasure and fear will be picked up using these electrode sensors on Brendan's face muscles, identifying smiles and frowns. I'm just going to wipe some alcohol gel on here, which is going to take off all the dirt and grease and sweat which is built up there. I don't like how you're saying that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sweat glands on Brendan's hands will open up during the ride, causing changes in electrical activity, another indicator of arousal. They're actually putting electric current through Brendan's fingers, um, and just the changes in that electric current is what gives us a signal that tells us more about the kind of level of arousal that he's experiencing. A specially designed helmet will also capture every facial expression. It's good. Brendan is suited, booted, and ready to ride. Let's go. You ready, Steph? Yeah. Alright, okay. Good. Excellent. We're looking down! Oh! How will Brendan's body react to this? Right down! And a twist as well! And later, we go deep inside Niagara's fury, and riders get hot under the collar of the ferocious X2.